Now, of course, so much happened over the weekend in entertainment. But let's begin with this one here in Nigeria, where the Oba of Lagos, Oba Real One, Aremu Akiolu, has strongly criticized Nollywood hit film Gangs of Lagos and demanded its removal of scenes wrongly portraying the Ayo people. Now, in the three-page letter addressed to Amazon Prime Nigeria on the 28th of June, the Lagos monarch expressed his deep concerns. In fact, sending an extra copy to the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwolu, he highlighted the impact of the film's depiction. Now, Oba Akiolu stated that it has tarnished the reputation of the Ayo brand by associating it with acts of terror, chaos, and murder. Now, he believes the movie's portrayal could also lead to doubts about the authenticity and cultural significance of the Ayo, deterring potential tourists and visitors from experiencing the cherished cultural heritage event. Now, Oba cited violations um, of indigenous intellectual property rights and the defilement of sacred rights and demanded within a period of 14 days the submission of a compensatory proposal uh, from the film's producers to address the infringement. Well, that's, that's one we're going to talk about for sure. Uh, but still in Nigeria, African giant Burner Boy has set a new record selling out another international stadium. Now, the Nigerian superstar successfully thrilled fans in the fully packed City Field Stadium in New York City. Now, the Grammy Award-winning star becomes the first African artist to deliver a sold-out stadium in the U.S. Burner Boy sold out 41,000 capacity City Field Stadium on Saturday, uh, with a guest performance by his sister, Nisi, who in fact opened the show. The 32-year-old singer performed Ye and songs from his last four albums from Outside, African Giant, Twice as Tall, and of course, Love Damini. He also delivered a fire performance of his collaboration, Location, alongside British rapper Day. Fans were also excited after Bonavoy unveiled Big Seven, his forthcoming single at the record-breaking show. We can see Busta Rhymes there. Everyone, it's, it's Burna, okay? So it's not new that we see international stars of different caliber at, uh, you know, Afrobeat shows, let's call it that, even in the U.S. and other parts of the world. So it's so beautiful, and uh, Afrobeat to the world. Let's watch this a bit. All right, the love for Afro Beats definitely is growing, and we're looking, looking at it even getting bigger. On the international scene, Drake uh, kick-started his It's All a Blood tour. Uh, the Canadian star opened his first tour in five years with a blockbuster show at Chicago's United Center. Now, the opening night, Drake gave a few credits and teased fans about upcoming projects. In fact, South African fans were thrilled with the news that Amapiano star Kabzadeh Small played a big part in the show's success. Now, the South African DJ and record producer co-produced all the music on the tour. Now, although Cabs at a Small didn't appear on the tour in person, fans were thrilled by the news as well as Drake's appreciation post. Now, Drake has shown mad love for Ama Piano in the past year, um, either through his Ovo Sound radio playlist and public admirations of setting stars like the Princess of Ama Piano, like we call her, Uncle Waffles, and producer Kelvin Momo. Now, Drake performed about 50 songs, and in total, including hit songs like Take Care, uh, Maven's Room, he also broke news to his fans at the show of an album coming out soon, which is exciting. In fact, there would also be some new music from Drake and Nicki Minaj. Recall that the two megastars, once signed to Young Money Cash Money, uh, gave us hit uh, 2011 hit song, Moments for Life. And fans are looking forward to something like that, or maybe even something more interesting. Uh, I'm definitely a Drake fan, so I'm looking forward to more music any day, any time. Finally, a transgender woman was crowned Miss Netherlands for the first time, making history in the Dutch country. 22-year-old Ricky uh, Valerie Coley won the pageant on Saturday, qualifying her to compete in the upcoming Miss Universe competition later this year. Now, Miss Netherlands will compete with women from all over the world battling for the crown. Although she becomes the first trans woman in Netherlands to compete, she would not be the first trans woman uh, to vie for Miss Universe title. In fact, Spain's Angela Ponce did so in 2018. What can we say? I guess we're all being inclusive in this generation. And uh, we wish her, I was going to miss the, 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 the pronoun, uh, all the best. Uh, but let me drag you guys into the conversation. First thing, uh, Gangs of Lagos. What are your thoughts about this? Would uh, you like to share your thoughts? Would you like to share I don't think Yoba has watched the movie. I think he has been, I think, you know, those aren't necessarily his thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, I think in a society that really 
has a lot of, you know, focus on growth and inclusivity and, you know, peace and all of that, you know, no other would randomly watch a movie and be upset, you know. So mm. I think these things are born, you know, out of a certain place that has emerged in the last couple of months or years in Nigeria. Um, and of course, you know, it's, 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 you know, when you see these things as um, in, in someone's creative space in a movie, you know, it should be kept there. It's a movie. You know, it's, it doesn't necessarily depict what reality is. It's a movie. Mm. And I'd, I'd like to just, you know, piggyback on what Osage has said. For those who are yet to see the movie, this is the picture you're seeing on the screen is what the Ayo festival looks like. So this is the Ayo masquerade. And in the film, there were scenes of them actually shooting someone, killing someone. Now, this is what the Urba has said is a false representative of the Ayo masquerade. We know that, first of all, Ayo is not a masquerade that kills. I think that everybody should know that. And for those who don't know, I would think that that movie would maybe make people curious enough to research more mm -hmm. about the Ayo masquerade mm -hmm. and find out, oh, it looks interesting. What is the masquerade about? It looks more like something that would spark my curiosity. Yeah. And we've seen in a number of movies where they have... Uh, costumes and, and masquerades in other countries, doing things that they typically wouldn't do in real life. It's all part of creative flexibility. Mm. I, I don't agree. think it was meant, I don't think that the spirit and the intent of that was to insult the Ayo masquerade, but mm. I do think that it was something that promotes culture, it was a very colorful video, it was very intriguing, and personally, I don't know how that is going to play out. Uh, them being asked to remove that scene from. I haven't. Movie. I haven't seen the movie, but I'm sure that yeah. if you look at that movie, there's other people who can decide that they're going to be of, of, offended because you know. Look, person, there's always something to character, be. You know, doesn't. Oh, they were even offended about. Some people you know, were offended about how Lagos Island was represented exactly. in terms of Lagos. So there would always be something to be. True, offended and that about. really.